You've got something far more important happening in your life today. Oh, what have I let myself in for with you, Per? They say be authentic. Every course you go on, be authentic, but you can't be. So it's like, how can you have a personality? Because you've just to say what they want you to say. So I've got no time for it, to be honest, because then I'm not me and I like to be me. I think the game needs more Roosters. And I thought having Russo and Mead on the bench was a question mark from the outset, but it, it worked for him. Like she knows what she's doing. She can smash a ball too, but she's a great finisher. Do you think Arsenal can win the league? The gap is really opening up between the top and the bottom of the WSL. And I think Barclays can do something. And I'm gonna knock on their door about this. <laughs> she's an addict. She loves it, she can't stop. So she'll probably not rest until she tries to win it. <laughs> yeah. mm. London City, you look, they've, you've invested enough that they should be winning the league. No pressure. Welcome back to The Kickback. My name is Shabana Hearn and I'm joined by my evil twin sister and professional football player and not as good looking, Rusha Littlejohn. Coming up for you on the show today, we've got former Aston Villa manager, Carla Ward. She joins us to discuss the start of the WSL season and everything else that she's been up to. And also, Rue will be letting loose in our brand new feature, Truth Juice. Truth Juice. See what we did there? Brilliant. Stay tuned for all of that coming up. And Rusha is with us now. Hello. Hi, Cass. How are we? Very well. How are you? How I'm, was your weekend? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a busy weekend. It's been full on. Um, loads of football. And like a good student I am, I've been watching. I watched two games. I had time to watch two games. As Roy Keane would say, it's your job. Well, it's not technically. My job is to be a footballer, but I found time to watch the opening game of the WSL. And um, do you want a medal, hen? Yes, I do. <laughs> Do you not think I could be out drinking wine? <laughs> you could drink wine and watch the opening game. It was a good opening game, to it be fair. It was. Um, I think it's safe to say it wasn't the... Villa should have scored. Mm -hmm. They should have scored. And I think they'll look back and go, they'll be disappointed. But um, Chelsea didn't play great, mm -hmm. but they'd done enough. They won the game. They'd done enough to win it. And I just look at the squad and I'm like, there's so many changes that they can make. Um, Lauren James only came on for a couple of minutes. So you get players like that that can start the game or bring on, like it's just a, the squad's packed. Um, but I think Sonia Bonpastor will just be happy that they've got three points on the board and they're up and running. She said that, she did say, just relieved to get the three points in this occasion because it will be that settling in situation, the, the WSL. But we're going to talk about all football in a minute. What's good is that to talk about that opening game, we've got former Villa manager and your old manager, Carla Ward, coming on the show very, very soon. But um, you've got something far more important happening in your life today that I feel that we should touch on. Oh, that, I've got an appointment at 12.15. So once I finish here, I am boom on that train to get my Botox fixed and I'm buzzing about it. Yeah. I'll be stunning. Say, frown for me. Get a close-up on that. I can't believe that. you're doing that to me Camera right now. Camera five, get a close-up on that. Hen, I Wait to see this next week, honestly. Won't be stuck in time. Gorgeous. So I got mine, I got mine seven days ago. Camera one, look. Look at that. It's the best forehead I've ever seen. Right. And then we're going to get you some hair extensions. Okay. And then we're going to sort your rails out. I've been in touch with the dentist actually, so <laughs> we'll get that sorted soon. It's what it is, is when I talk and you can see this tooth here. It's like, mm, I look like one of those wee dogs that are chewing a wasp. Um, <laughs> it's not great, but we'll get it fixed. You and then I'm thinking, do I get a wee 0 0.5 in my top lip? What, you're going to go fillers as I well? I think I might, I might do it. Not much, but just a wee bit, because it all, it's like when I'm talking, sometimes it just goes into this, and I'm like, <laughs> welcome back to WSL Preview. Yeah. It's not doing anything for anyone. And if anything, it'll get the ratings down, so we need to fix this. We need to up your game. We need to, because, you know, right now I'm a 10. You're like close three, right? maybe, so we need you up your... And also you're single as anything, so we need to get you mm. a bird. Okay. Are you looking for a bird or no? Not really, no. I'm just living my life. Um, I had a companionship there. I think I still have a companionship. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not looking to... I know people might think I'm married, but I'm not. It's an aura ring, um, so... So aura rings track sleep, what you're eating, Get Not what we're eating, you're miles off it, Hen. It actually tracks, um, we wear it at club because it tracks um, our period cycle. Love and that. Um, the community of Washington Spirit, Leon in London City, um, they like to track it because they can do a lot for the women's game. So we are the guinea pigs. Of the order ring. But do you know what's fascinating? So right now I'm probably due on, 
and right now I'm sweating buckets and it tracks all that. So it's it, actually it's fascinating, really. Well, when you are due on, mm -hmm. you're, you get so much hotter, don't you? Yeah. Because I can vouch for that. I was like, what was I like yesterday? Did you see me yesterday? Well, it's not that. I can actually see a big blue ring under your armpits. I've got sweat pits. Yeah. I've not. It's the top <laughs> underneath. You're such a cow sometimes. Mm -hmm. I've got my Ron seal on this morning. Mm -hmm. No sweating in here. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I uh, when I'm due on, I'm like, is anybody else in the furnace or is it just me yeah. sweating buckets and then I get all angry? But that's a story for another time. Oh, we could touch on that. Could we touch on that? What you done yesterday? What? To um, a man walking along the street. He wasn't innocent in this right, situation. Right, okay. Moving on. But no, do you know what? I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. When I think when you have kids, it just you just change your opinion on things that you would never talk about when you were younger. You'd be like, oh, she gets her period. Oh my God, that's disgusting. <laughs> we all get it, right? Mm -hmm. But see now, when I'm due on, yeah. I am a raging bull and I have zero tolerance for It's a new day. It's, it's a, a new, new day. day. So let's start it on a positive one. Okay, you can cut all of that out if you want. Either way, I don't care. But I'm on my period now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Risha's getting her Botox and her hair extension soon. That's great. We'll try and get her a wedding ring at some point soon instead of a fake one. Um, but like we see, the WSL started back. It was really good. Shall we get into it in full detail with a very special guest? We shall. And you know what's great? She's not my manager anymore, so I can rip her to shreds. It's going to be good fun. <laughs> Carla Wardiola coming up. And joining us now is former Aston Villa manager Carla Ward, who was also part of the coaching and backroom staff for the USA winning Olympic gold. Hello. Hi, what have I let myself in for with you pair? Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> the way that you yes. two look at each other. You're not my manager anymore. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Listen, I've got lots of stories about Rouge, so don't I've worry about that. I've got lots about you. I mean, please yeah. feel free. We could do this all day. <laughs> all day. How are you? Good. Very good. Um, you've Rejuvenated. Had a... Pardon? Rejuvenated. Good. So, full summer off then, obviously post Olympics. So yeah, we better summer. Holidays, yeah, lots of holidays. I think um, post Olympics, went on holiday, came back. So I've only been back what a week or so. So yeah, enjoying myself. We lots. just spoke briefly there before we've come into the studio, and you were saying that you feel like you're <clears throat> a new person again, or you found yourself. What do you mean by that? So look, in football, I don't care what anyone says, right? They say be authentic. Every course you go on, be authentic, but you can't be. You can't be. You see, I come away from it, and I thought. I realised that it sucks the life. I was, I became a robot, and it sucked the life out of me a little bit. And I lost myself, I think. So now I've, I've, I've come out of it. Got a spring in my step. Can actually find my personality again. You know, the little one that I did have, <laughs> and um, enjoy myself. Yeah. So yeah, I'm at the minute. I'm just enjoying life. I find that so refreshing to hear because it's something that you speak about as well. Like quite often, we'll still be a, a, a player. There are things you just shouldn't talk about or won't talk about, and then you probably sometimes say too much with no <laughs> ill intent, you know, with no ill intent. I don't but then you're like sanctioned because it's like you shouldn't have a voice because I, I don't think control. I say anything bad, but I, I think it is like that, like when you worked as a manager, it's like you're representing a club, so you're representing a badge, so they just want everyone to fall into line and you almost become a bit like a robot. Yeah. So it's like, how can you have a personality? Because you've just to say what they want you to say. Mm. So I've got no time for it, to be honest, and I never will have, and I will never <laughs> learn that because then I'm not me, and I like to be me. Yeah. So you should change everything about yourself, though. Really? really can I disagree. That. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree. I think the game needs more Rushers. Mm. Thank you. What, what bit of Rusha? What you see is what you get. Do you know what? I was actually at a sports conference the other day and there were some unbelievable people in the room and everybody talks, particularly all of the TV... Um, broadcasters. Yeah, and... broadcasters, the partners. Everyone wants to see personality, right? So they want to know who people are. They want to know all about the player, what they do, why they do it. Same with the managers. But there isn't... You don't have that access. Because the clubs don't let them. I would argue, yeah. Mm. I would argue too, like, players are now scared because they're scared of what clubs might think or what national teams might think. So again, it's like, and, and then if you think of like Lionesses, they're all media trained. So they're all, every answer they give is a media answer. How was the game? Well, yeah, I thought we played well ever. And you're like, snoozing boy, oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, but everyone's scared to just be like, just show, actually say what they want to say. Mm. Um, but I get it because I might be backlash too. You say something wrong, you get backlash. So it's probably a scary place to be, especially with how 
big they've become in a short space of time. Do you know the only one time I ripped up, ripped up the hymn sheet? Well, not the only time, may I add, but possibly one of them. After we got beat to Chelsea six 0 the day Emma decided to tell the nation she was leaving, and we'd just been hammered six 0 worst defeat certainly in my career. And I looked at Emma and I said, "What do I say here? What do I say in the?" Because I thought, I'm getting the sack after this game. That's what I thought. I'm getting the sack after this game. I've just been beat. Five games on the trot. I'm going. And she said, go and be yourself. Don't listen to anything else. Go and be yourself. And I did. And then I started talking about the reality of the fact of what you give. You're a mum. You're a, a mum to the players as well as your daughter. You, you actually just be you. And I think that saved my job. That really? one interview after really? the game. But I ripped up the hymn sheet. Didn't speak about anything that, other than what I actually felt in that moment. Carla was a mum of the players because I used to ask her after the like, can I get a tenner for a bottle of wine? So it was always good. <laughs> there was a day, actually. What was it that you did? I said, in fairness. I'll buy you a yeah. bottle of wine. In fairness, I moved it. my seat for a new signing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Emily so I made a bit. It. Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. She came home crying that day, yeah. Carla. I know. Oh, they wouldn't do it to anyone her. else. I offered her a bottle you know, of wine. Yeah. I got it eight months I'll later. <laughs> the thing is, though, she's upgraded, though, from the tenner mm. bottle. We're now yeah, on yeah. the Whisper and Angel. And that's £21, so... Go to Aldi. Right. Apparently they've got a version of it. They you? have, and it's exactly the same. Is it? Yes. You need to try this version. You try it. You do. You try we'll try it. it. You do. Get it yeah. in for the truth just a little bit later on, not to production. Um, you mentioned like being yourself. Your advice came from Emma Hayes that day. She is like a mentor to you. You two have a lovely relationship. You were part of her coaching backroom staff for the Olympics. <laughs> She always is herself. I can't really imagine her listening to anyone who's telling her what to say or do. Um, is that, like, how much do you learn from her when you're in her company? I would argue she's so good because she does. She does listen, she does want to learn, she does want to take in people's opinions, and I think that's, that's vital, but ultimately she will make the decision. Mm -hmm. I think, look, she's, I've been very vocal ever since that day one. I think you were there, actually, the first, my second, Second game as w, in, a, in the WSL as Birmingham manager, we played Chelsea and I'm thinking, you're going to get absolutely walloped here in the position we were in. <laughs> but um, yeah, she we, we spoke before the game and she was like, anything you need, let me know. I mean, if you're going to say that to me and I need your help, then I'm going to bug you, right? So okay. I did. So we become, um, I would say, friends. And yeah, she guided me. I would say things in the media that I shouldn't have said and she'd be on the phone. Don't say this. <laughs> you need some help. And yeah, she guided me. And because I needed it as well. I was raw and I was often a little bit like Rouge, say what I think. And sometimes that can hurt you. And she really guided me. But she guided me with a lot through good and through bad. And we had a really turbulent year that year, as everybody knows at Birmingham. So I think without her, I would have struggled big time. Mm, fascinating. I mean, good to know that you're leaning on such an insight like that. I mean, yeah. for whatever it is you end up doing, I'm sure it'll be good because Emma Hayes is involved. I mean, the restraining orders in place. I'm obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't care. I feel like Emma Hayes will reach out to me one day and she'll be like, you, come on along. I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. I think so. What will she say? What will she need you for? Banter or something. <laughs> <laughs> Team morale. Something like that. Team so, morale? Yeah. She rates herself, um, she's fasc she? Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's fascinating, though. She's fascinating. Look, Emma, Emma speaks. People listen. And I was... It blew me away, actually, just how she delivers a message mm. and how simple she makes it. And that's why she's the best, in my opinion, the best in the world. And the Olympics, that overall experience, how was that? Unbelievable. Obviously, it came quite last minute, so wasn't expecting it. And yeah, I joined up with the team in Marseille through the group stages. Just, it was just unbelievable to see day to day how she works, how the international setup is, because ultimately, could have seen myself in an international setup. Yes, probably more so than a club setup again, just from the work life balance, but. Just to see and be part of that was huge. And to get the opportunity that she gave me was massive. And yeah, I'll be forever grateful. But challenging because it was tough and the turnarounds were tough. And, you know, they're going for a gold medal. And for the US, that is the pinnacle. So, yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Obviously, being a manager yourself, what do you think you've learned from it? And what do you think was, like, the hardest part of being a manager? In the WSL? Yeah. I don't think people realise what it is. Mm. And um, I think I said to you before, if I went back into it, I'd go back in as a, as a manager and bring a head coach with me. Because I think you, too often you try and do it all yourself. And you know me, I want to look after everyone. I want to do it all. I want to be involved in everything, but you can't be. And one thing I learned at, from Emma at the Olympics, she delegates in such a way that she's got people around her she trusts. And I'll be honest, I've never really got my full staff circle right. 
never. And yeah. I think that is so important. That's probably the hardest and the biggest challenge. But the other thing is, and this goes back to me, you know me deep down, I'm mm -hmm. soft, I really care about people. F players are commodities, which is a pr I don't agree with. Mm. And I fought tooth and nail over the last four years for better conditions, facilities, pay, everything. I hope you don't mind me saying, six grand a year I signed Rushon. Do you remember? At Birmingham. You got six grand of expenses. I can cut that out if it was. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, that's right. No, I, I came uh, for half a season. Half <laughs> I a season. Cut right? out. Uh -huh. yeah. But yeah. my point is, mm -hmm. you're constantly having to fight yeah. for better, and that's that's tough because yeah. ultimately, then you've you've still got to try and win football matches. Yeah, but I that, love it. But, but it's that just shows tough. you, Carla. Then there was players who would do it for the opportunity because they weren't. I mean, especially at your age, it wasn't for money. It was because you do it for the love of the game. Whereas now, then that's changing. There is a not, not for all players, don't get me wrong, there's still some terrible wages going around that I think some people would be shocked to hear. But yeah, six grand for that season is... It, was yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't it was, a wage, was it? It was expenses, It right? was expenses, yeah. But the bottom I line left is that Leicester all... and went to Birmingham to play. I think with the manager, the old manager at Leicester, it was like we kind of had to be... Mm, something had happened, don't really know what it was. And um, it was the I wasn't going to play uh, Jonathan Morgan at the time. Um, and then... The opportunity came about to go to Birmingham and I was like, I'd spoke to Christy Murray and I thought, right, let's go to Birmingham. And and it was great. That six months, five, six months it was. It was brilliant. We survived. Ever. It was great. Um, yeah. It was like dog eat dog, wasn't it? Misfits, yeah. as we called ourselves. It was misfits, but if you actually look at that team, <laughs> if you look at the team, right? there's some players that are still playing and they're playing at a decent yeah. level and they're doing all right for themselves. So it was like there was something there. There was something within the group. Um, and there was a belief. Yeah. yeah, wasn't there? There was a belief that right, dry. we're underdogs, but we'll go out and it's going to be ugly, but we'll do what we have to do. Well, we are going to speak about Birmingham in more detail very, very soon because we'll talk about the championship. It was also the opening uh, weekend of the WSL. Lots of interesting games. Your former side against your mentor's former side on Friday night. That was a good game. Very um, good. Chelsea beating Villa 1-0. What did you think about the result? I thought it was good. I think, I think first half, Chelsea had enough enough opportunities. I think that if they were clinical, it might have been a different looking game. But I thought, I thought Villa were very good. I think you can see what they're trying to do. And um, they're playing a little bit more central to, to what we used to play, so to speak. But no, look, they've, they've, we, I believe we left, I left a very good squad there. But now adding those eight players, and we're not just talking about squad players, we're talking about high level players. I think it's a season that they can really do something. You mentioned earlier on before we came on about the investment as well in Villa, this window that's kind of gone under the radar. They've spent they've spent cash. Yeah. Is that yeah, annoying yeah. when you come away from a club and go, now you've spent the money? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have said that, actually. I've had an awful lot of messages as the signings have come in, but my decision wasn't about money. My decision was solely about my daughter, spending more time, getting my life back on track. And, and you know, that was, that was a big part of it. I'm actually delighted, weirdly, because there's some really good people there that deserve that. And I would like to think I played a massive part in that them getting to that point because look, I had really good relationships. I still got really good relationships with the board. Um, they know that I just ask, I knock on doors, I ask questions. The worst thing they can say is no, close the door, but they're, they're good people. And I wanted to try and leave in a position where I can help them move forward. And I think I did that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the, the result of the weekend keeps Chelsea where Chelsea need to be. But I think Aston Villa, like you say, the, the highest place finish was fifth that season. That you we guys. were involved, weren't we, Roosh? We were, <laughs> we were there. You were there, you were part there. of that. So, so we, we, we realistically don't want them to finish fifth, do we? <laughs> that's it, that's it. Yeah. They can't go any higher. <laughs> I do think touching on Aston Villa, I think it'll be interesting to see how they do. They've brought in a lot of quality players. Mm. They spent a bit of cash. I think it'll be interesting to see how the team crack on. There's a lot of big players in that team. So with big players, there might come a bit of egos. So it's going to be interesting how he keeps them all happy and how he keeps them all working together. Mm -hmm. um, I still think Kenza Daly out on the left, you're going to be better getting her in central and letting her dictate the play because she's a, she makes things happen. So I think you probably have to get her on the ball and get her playing. And then her and Rich Daly's got great chemistry. Um, so we've seen that, we've seen that, when was that? Two seasons ago? Mm. We'd seen that when they scored, they, they linked up loads. And, and Rachel got golden The boot. stats were, what was the stats? Mm -hmm. yeah, Rachel got golden boot. Mm -hmm. Ken, and, oh, Ken's is one of the best tens in the league. I don't mm -hmm. care what anyone says. Yeah. She doesn't get it. She uh -huh. doesn't get the recognition because she's not a lioness. True. She's a True. lioness 
everyone in the mm. world's talking about her. The way I seen it is when Kenza was playing, it was like, if you were on the pitch, you go, you go and do your thing, and you've got to have people that are willing to just sit and let players like that play. But in that Aston Villa team, I don't know how others will feel about that, because I feel like people want to be the person, <clears> they want to be star girl, which is great, I get that. Like, people want to be part of the game, but sometimes I think we get players like Kenza, let them do their thing. So there's a lot of high ambitions for Villa this season. When you talk about Chelsea, yep. do you think it's them again for the title or who else? Well, I'm going to have to stick with what I've said. I, I think Man City can win it this year. And I actually liked what I saw from Man City at the weekend against Arsenal. I just think that there's a... Look, they've they, they come very close last year. And I just think the way that they've added... If they keep Viv fit, mm. I mean, I know people talk about it, but I don't think it's spoken about enough. Viv is world class. If they keep her fit, she will be the difference. And I think that, yeah, I'm going to go with City. I think the like the City forward line is crazy. Like the people that are in that, but can come off the bench, the people that start the game. There's people that yeah. are like game changers. There's people that just make things happen out of nothing. Viv keeping Viv fit will be important. But the, the only thing about that game at the weekend, Arsenal, Man City game, for the neutral, it was great because it was end to end. But why was it so transitional? It was yeah. so open. Yeah. Um, and Man City played a very high line. And I just thought at times, like, Arsenal were in behind them how many times? And I was like, they're kind of asking for trouble. But it's going to be an interesting season. But nah, I'm still sticking with Chelsea. See, I'm more of a Man City group. I actually think looking at Arsenal, considering they had that upset last week in the Champions League, they wouldn't have expected to come away with a loss from that game, even though Hecken or no mugs. I actually look at the weekend at the Emirates and go, I thought they performed better than I thought they would have. And I thought having Russo and Mead on the bench was a question mark from the outset, but it, it worked for them. I think, well, that's it. Jonas loves, um, he's Scandinavian, so he likes Scandinavian players. Stina Black Stennis stretches the game. She stretches it. So she, she's always looking for that run and he, he likes that. My only thing is I think players like Russo and Beth Mead are better finishers. They're natural yes. finishers, yeah. so I get he wanted to play that. He wanted to play that, like, you've seen his pace, but I just think you've got to have Beth Mead on the pitch. Russell too. Is Russell lacking a bit of confidence? I know it's first game of the season, but you've seen her chance where she goes for a goal and passes it mm -hmm. to the keeper, so you're going, maybe she's a bit low on confidence, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I prefer Russo out wide, if I'm honest. Really? The few times, yeah, I do. I don't know what it is. I, I would. I'd play her out wide. I'd play Mead. Yeah, I'd play Mead on the other side. I actually could argue, I could see Beth Mead playing central mm. because she's a goal scorer and in the box, she's she's a deadly finisher. Yeah. She, she doesn't get enough credit for mm. her finishing. Look at all the goals she scores. Everything's side netting. Like she knows what she's doing. She can smash a ball too, but she's a great finisher. Mm. Do you think Arsenal can win the league? I think... <laughs> Give I think they're a, they're a quality team, right? <laughs> they're a quality team. I think playing at the Emirates, like that's their, that's their fortress. So it's, I think they'll be every home game there. They'll be looking to capitalise on that. They get a great fan base coming in, so they perform. They enjoy playing there. Arsenal sometimes switch off, and I think just with what's go what's going on in the team, I, is there something going on in the team where I just think I just don't see them all on the same page. I don't see them all on the same page, and I think when they play the likes of Chelsea, Chelsea ruffle feathers. Chelsea mm. are happy happy to go in there and go. We'll stick one in here. We'll, le we'll, we'll leave a late one on here. They're not being dirty, but they're aggressive. And I just yeah. think sometimes Arsenal are missing that. Arsenal play great football, but when it comes to it, it's not about playing great football, it's about winning games. And sometimes I think Chelsea might just have the upper hand on them. Mm. But I think Arsenal will be thriving right now with everyone going, writing them off already. I think that'll be for them. It'll be like, all right, OK. Just want to bring you back then, Carla, to uh, Arsenal, because it's so easy to focus on Arsenal sometimes because there's so much of an expectation of them. And let's be fair, they have been off it the last couple of seasons. Do you think Jonas C. Deville's under pressure? Yeah, in a short short answer. I think, um, look, I think when you, when you sign, this is on a whole now, but if you, as a manager, right, if you sign players, big players that aren't, necessarily on big money but you get them in from, from wherever but you sign big players you're under pressure from the outside as it is right but then if you go and sign players that come with big fees big money you're then under pressure from a far bigger audience than just your fans you're then under pressure from the board and this the, those decision makers so look they've 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 recruited really well um but yeah to to sit here and give you a politically correct answer and and dress it up and say no would be wrong because the reality is every manager is under pressure but when you sign big players and big money then then yeah of course you're mm. under pressure
Um, I think there's a lot of expectation. You can feel it from the fan base as well. They want more. They want to win the title. They want to be competing in the Champions League. Um, big player injured at the weekend, Leah Williamson. Do we know the situation there and how much of a loss is she to that back line? I think she's a huge loss. Oh, she's massive. She's, she's, she, she makes them tick. She she keeps them together. I think she's a massive loss. I don't know why she was out. Of, uh, concussion, right? I'm actually mm -hmm. not sure. I yeah, didn't know. Concussion. I just, the game was on. I was, I was wondering, where's, where's Leigh Wilson? Where's yeah. she? Um, but yeah, she, she's a playmaker. Like, from the back, she gets them playing. She gets the midfielders on the ball. She can hit a lovely diag. She's got a great, great range of passing, great vision. Um, we've seen her, Serena wanted her to step into midfield at times because she's that good, but she's obviously more comfortable at the back. So yeah, huge loss for Arsenal. But again, coming back from her ACL injury, it's like she's been struggling to just, you know, stay fit. And that's we've seen that maybe with Beth Mead and Viv Miedema. Like, they're both getting wee niggles on the back of that. So hopefully they can this season just get fit and stay healthy and show everyone what they can do. Absolutely. And I think to progress in the Champions League, to move forward, you're going to need players like that fit and available as often as possible. You almost need to manage their weeks. And we did this a little bit with you, right? So... You have to, sometimes, and we've done the same a couple of times last season with Causey, your end goal is the game, right? So then your week has to, how are we going to get player X ready for here? And if that means staying off feet, staying off the grass, being inside with the physios, whatever that needs, you have to do. You can't push them back on the pitch because it's a tick box of getting them on the pitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Keira Walsh actually saw it at the Emirates the other day. She played, I think, you know, in, in Spain the day before, flew out in the morning and was at the Emirates uh, for the game on Sunday. Arsenal really seemed to want to tie her down. I mean, how crucial is it is that they keep bringing the big players back to the WSL? I mean, sure, surely she must have wanted that deal to happen too. But greatest league in the world, isn't it? In my opinion, I think. And Arsenal's attractive, you know, they're playing at the big stadium, they've, they've got it all right off the pitch, I believe, from what it looks like. So I think that they are a really attractive club. I think they're arguably one of the most attractive clubs in England. Um, and players do want to play in the WSL. And I think over this next couple of years, you're going to see all the biggest players in the world come across. I mean, we've seen that already with the likes of Cal Dente and Zick mm. They've They've publicly said they're not, they, they won the World Cup, but there wasn't change in Spain. They're not happy about it, so they've came they've came to England. But you've seen Kira Walsh, she's probably went, I want you to win a Champions League. She's done that. She's probably going to do it again. And then she'll probably come back to England. And uh, Chelsea, in terms of their recruitment, um, and Sonia Bonpastor, you know, being a winner in the Champions League and with your relationship with Emma Hayes. Sonia Bonpastor said she's got our blueprint to win the Champions League with Chelsea. What would it be like if she won it with Chelsea and Emma Hayes didn't? What would Emma Hayes feel about that, do you know? I don't know, but Emma's a Chelsea fan, right? So I know all of her family went as well on Friday night to the opening game. So she's a Chelsea fan. She'll want them to do well, 100%. Did Emma, would Emma have loved to win the Champions League? Of course. Um, but would she also be delighted for them to win? Uh, I would say so. Mm -hmm. Will they win it? I don't know. I mean, listen, she, Sonia's got the pedigree. She's been there as a player. She's been there as a manager. From what I hear, she's a quite a calm character off the pitch, but can can change it when need to. So, yeah, it'll be exciting. I would love to see a English team do it in these next couple of years. Yes. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me either if Emma, Emma Hayes goes away with the US right now. She'll be looking to win something else. She'll be looking now, she'll be going, I need to win a World Cup. And if she does that, I'm sure maybe when her family's a bit older and stuff, she'll be able to go back into football. She probably will. She's it's pr it's probably like, she's an addict. She loves it. She can't stop. So she'll probably not rest until she tries to win it. <laughs> yeah. mm. So, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, stories probably for another time, but I still see her as somebody who can manage in the men's game. And yeah. I, I know that she, she said it on Talk Sport the other week with H&J. People keep asking me this question. I'm not the one you should be asking. You've got to ask the board members. You've got to ask the owners of the club why they aren't going to employ the women anyway. Do you think she could do it in the men's game? Yes. I think there's, I think there's a few that could. But she's right. I think that until a football club goes down that route or really takes a risk and takes a chance, who's going to be the first? Mm. And it isn't, about, it isn't about us coaches, managers. It is about the football club. Who's going to be the first to say, we're going to appoint a female? Hmm. It would only be her in my head if it were going to happen. It's not something game. that I get caught up in. I'm, I'm just like, if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I know people are fascinated by it. People want to see it happen, but I'm just like... It's going to have to be what? someone thick-skinned because you're going to get a 
you're gonna get a whopper of abuse, aren't you? Yeah, maybe you two could go in there. We could go in. We could. Yeah. If you go down the route of personality. You yeah, know, at least we've got a bit of bants about <laughs> us and then we'll just get people that can uh, do all the bits here and there. Give yeah. them some truth juice, what we're going to come to very, very soon. I want to ask you about relegation as well. Yes. Whether that will happen this season. I mean, there's the conversation that with the, the new plans in place that perhaps maybe two teams will go up from the championship and nobody will be relegated. I don't think they can. I don't think they can implement that once the season started. I think that they, they, they had to happen. Yeah, yeah. Had, to, had, to, had, had to happen before. Now. There's yeah. absolutely no way that could come into play. I mean, for the integrity of the game, it just makes no sense. So I think there will be relegation this year. There needs to be two coming up. Um, who gets relegated? I don't know. West Ham. I mean, again, not not at the levels this week over the weekend. You know, beaten, but. If they're not protected from what we've spoken to some of the players, you know, to some people there, they they don't feel that they're getting the backing from the club whatsoever. What's the point in having a women's team if you're not going to back them? I mean, aren't they one of the only clubs never to play at their stadium? Yeah. Doesn't that yeah. Yeah. the last few Doesn't seasons? That, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So look, I think um, I think Rianne's up against it for sure. Um, and then obviously, look, I say it all the time: the gap between the Championship and the WSL is 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 big. So it'll be how Crystal Palace can also. But for me, it's one of those two. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, looking ahead to a good battle this season, I'm looking forward to seeing Arsenal Chelsea. I'm looking forward to seeing more of Arsenal City and City Chelsea. Those kind of games. But that is the that's the big three yeah. that we talk about. It's got the biggest bolstered squad and kind of world renowned players. Do you think there could be any upsets along the way? Yeah. I think there'll be upsets along the way. I think people will drop points, but I still see one of the top three winning. They'll win the league. Maybe maybe somebody different will win a, a cup, an FA Cup or something. Um, Conti Cup. But to me, they're too strong right now. The strength and depth for these squads, the money sent, spent, the amount of players, I just, I think, and, and the experience they've got. Yeah, I can't see anyone other than that top three winning it. Yeah. One of the top three. Mm. Man City. Chelsea. Chelsea, I think I'm Man City as well. But I think it'll be the most competitive title race going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there'll be more than just the, the two going into the final day this year. And, you know, first game of the season played, it's Brighton at the top on goal difference because of that hat-trick from the new Japanese signing, Keiko. I mean, that was an outstanding debut to the WSL, but also the investment, the players they've recruited this window. Can you, can you rule teams like that out? Bear in mind, they've not got Champions League. There's more focus on the league for them. They've, yeah, they've recruited really well. <clears throat> I think for me, not just CK, but uh, I think Frank Kirby, mm. the experience that she'll come with is huge. I yeah. think Nikita Paris, I think once she gets going, I think it'll, she's a top, top player. And it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting because they have invested in the, with Brighton. They've done it in a slightly different way. Because I'll be honest, the, the start of the window and the players they're bringing in, I was thinking they're not, they're not at the level. Right. But then they start bringing in the bigger names and the experience. And then I'm thinking, right, these can do something. And I watched their game at the weekend and I thought they were really impressive. OK, good to know. Uh, Manchester United, are we unfairly not considering them? I mean, even the idea of Champions League football, I feel that for some reason there's not as much as a focus on them. I feel like that's probably because of what's went on with the training ground situation and maybe the investment, the backing. I feel like that's what we focused on. But I think you can't write off the team and the players that are still there. There's still quality, quality players in that squad. They want to win games, so they'll be looking to perform. Um, but for me, there's Tottenham Hotspurs too. I'm looking at them and I'm going, we played them in pre-season and they look all right. They're playing some really good football. He's and good they've manager. got good players in, the, in their squad. So, like you said, it's going to be such a competitive league this uh, this year. Well, it's Villa Tottenham at the weekend, isn't it? So that'll mm. be a really interesting yeah. game. Yeah. OK. We're going to preview the games very, very soon. Listen, there was a... Barclays have put their name uh, and title to the Women's Super League and to the Championship over the next three years. Once again, 15 million a year of investment coming into the women's game. From what both of you have seen, from everything you've been through in women's football, where does that money have to go? First and foremost, I met the um, the lady that leads on this at a conference the other day and um, from Barclays. Is this and Nikki Dowsett? No, that's the, oh, uh, the CEO, that's the CEO the of NUCO. So, Katie from Barclays, um, she spoke about not just being a partner, but really driving change. And I thought it was fascinating. And I, I think they're the right partner. And on everything you see, I think that they, they can really help. But the gap is really opening up between the top and the bottom of the WSL. 
and then the WSL and the championship. I think the money, and let's be really honest, we're talking, you know, the rich get richer, right? Mm -hmm. How do we help the bottom half of the WSL and then how do we help the championship close that gap? Otherwise, the top will run away with it and it'll become it'll become very difficult to catch up. So I think there has to be investment there. I think there also has to be investment in female coaches in this country because there is so much quality. There are so many quality females, but because we don't have data, everyone's going on data now. So you're seeing an influx of foreign managers, right? Usually male, that are coming into this league. And I think we have to do something and I think Barclays can do something, and I'm going to knock on their door about this. <laughs> I you think, love a door knock. I know, I know. <laughs> well, what's the worst they can do? Shut it, get out, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Off you go. Um, so I think that something can be done to help our coaches in this country, because there's a massive pool of them. See how talking on, you're talking about the, the teams at the top, so we've got Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, yeah. United. You look at them players and their salaries, they've got teams that are like maybe wanting to pay the salaries. How, what do we do? Is it, do you cap it? What do you do? How do, how do you? There is a cap. Is there? There's a, All there's right. a, uh -huh. there's, well, not a wage cap, but there's a cap where you can only spend a certain amount of your income. So me personally, I don't know how that works and there's loopholes and, but I think we need to get stricter and tighter because otherwise, like you say, they're going to run away with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and also that when it comes to transfers, further down the road story probably for another time but it doesn't feel like now I mean if you look at Arsenal women we've we've gone on about this so many times to let Viviana Miedema go on a free to strengthen a rival why would you not have sold her six months earlier and made a made a profit from her I mean if the if the women's clubs aren't going to be run or making profit based on transfers yet you know they're, they're still not they're still going to be governed by the men they're not running off their own accord just yet but when there's investment like this when you're going straight to the women's game there has to be the best infrastructure as well if you want professional environment or professional players playing at the best level everything that they go into everything they touch has to be right surely yes yeah but it goes back to <clears throat> I'm going to use my picnic blanket anal analogy so I think the women's game is like a picnic blanket right so you've got champagne strawberries on the top and then on the bottom, you've got rubble, mm -hmm. bit of grass. Yep, <laughs> bit of this, bit of that. <laughs> but what it looks like is that. But what it is, is that. Mm -hmm. And until we build out this, this could fall at any point. So you go back to the investments, the money, the infrastructure. I mean, we fought tooth and nail at both Birmingham and Villa to, to get infrastructure in place, mm -hmm. right? Which we get, we, we're getting there, got there in the end. But this needs building out. Okay. It I needs, could go into that's that a, for yeah. a long time. But that's but. it. It's such a big conversation yeah. to have. And I don't think the wider general public are seeing how sometimes the infrastructure is so poor at some at some levels of the women's game yeah. in some clubs. You're, we're still seeing it now. Like some teams, like especially in the championship, you're, you're fighting for pitches. There's still teams on AstroTurf pitches that are like 3G that have been 20 years there. They're in bits. And your people want to train on that like full time. It's not good enough. All that has to be fixed. You've got the lights are... Blackburn, they've got players on part-time wages, but they're expected to compete in that league. How is that okay? It's not sustainable. But the thing is, I think players always want the opportunity. You spoke about me going to Birmingham. It was an opportunity. I wanted to play. That's the thing. And I think clubs know that. And do they maybe abuse it? Probably. Interesting. Um, <laughs> okay, I feel that we could do a bit of five-hour episode on this, but we just can't, <laughs> Carla, because you've got commitments and we don't have a life, so we'll probably continue talking about it for the next day or so. Um, <coughs> Time now for our new feature. We're going to let Rusha on the loose with the truth juice. Stay tuned for that. You're watching The Kickback. Please subscribe if you have not already. And it's this time of the day where we're going to let our Rue on the loose with our brand new feature, truth juice. Rue, <laughs> truth juice. Truth. Very, very creative. Go on then. What's right. your truth juice? I'm going, in, I'm going in easy this week. Okay, going in nice and easy. But we've seen the uh, Rodri, Man City, talking recently about the the schedule and amount of games to play. We've just seen him rupture his ACL. He's going to be out for the season. Okay, going to go over the women's game right now. So the women's game, WSL. We're also talking that the calendar's too full for the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City. International players, players playing, try to qualify for Champions League, playing most fixtures in the Cups because they win. League games, all that. So their calendar's pretty stacked, okay? 
So we've got players like that, but then there's players at the other end of the table. We've not got enough fixtures. There's not enough. We've got some weeks where you've got maybe one fixture, two fixtures, then there might be international games. So it's not great. But we look at the likes of like clubs saying they want to. So I'm just going to go on this one, right? The colour is set here. It's red. It's Arsenal. Arsenal are saying that they're not happy with the calendar, right? But they sent their players to Australia <laughs> to go and play in a showdown game for what? For money. For money. Arsenal don't have enough money at their club. You're telling me that they had to send their players to Australia to play in that. Okay. And then they go on a pre-season camp to America. I don't get it. There's mm. players picking up niggles already. Like, what's it about? I don't get it. What do we want? Brings me on to something that you've said. Another thing. Players are individuals. Manage them individually, okay? There's this thing in the women's game right now, and it's like, if you don't train every session, you're not playing. If you don't train match day minus one, you're not playing. Why? Why? It does my nothing. <laughs> it might take 24 hours for somebody to be ready to just be rested to get to, <laughs> be able to play, whether they play 45, 60 minutes, whatever it is. But treat players as individuals. I think maybe it goes back to the infrastructure, staff, not enough staff to maybe manage players properly. It does my nothing. Listen to the players. Listen to the players. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a lot <laughs> yeah. of juice. Yeah. It's a lot of juice for yeah. some truth. I mean, you've probably you've dealt with it yourself. You've dealt you've dealt with it as a manager. You've probably had to say, "Well, I want this player available, so I don't care if they're not training." Well, we could talk if... about you, right? Right. So there there were weeks that you trained once in a week, mm -hmm. but still played at the weekend. Mm. That happens. Yeah. Same with a couple of players last season, and you have to get them ready. I think if they're big players and you need them, then sometimes there is expect you know, which some players do find difficult. Well, it's one rule for me, one rule for mm. them. But if they're game changes, yeah, it becomes difficult because ultimately we're in a we're in an elite environment where it's results business. And that's it for, for for me as a player, it's not like you don't want to be on the training pitch. It's not that. Like everyone knows my Achilles are in bits. They're they are the the two of them are terrible. They're really bad. So I've had this for years now. I've had it for since COVID, four or five years, whatever it is. You have to manage them. Um and I think some players might get their back up because you're not training. But it's not for you don't want to train, it's because you have to be right to try and get through a game. So what you're saying is that Rodri should be listened to because yes. he is an exceptional player. He's likely going to win the Ballon d'Or. He's won the treble. He's won everything really going. And he called it last week. We're bo our bodies can't go through this. You know, he played, I think it was 63 games for club and country last season. Had he remained fit and went through every single game, it would have been 85 games for Rodri for club and country and now he's ruptured his ACL. That's outrageous. So, so you know is, your body best, right? That's well. outrageous. Like that is, but that is just right now, the men's game and stuff like that, it's money. People don't care about the players right now. And I think there's people out there that go, well, they're a professional football player. Their wages are ridiculous. That doesn't matter. Like it's Irrelevant. not about that. It's not about how much they get paid. They, like, do you know what I mean? That That's just the way it is. That's the way it is in the men's game. It's, it's crazy money. Do I think it's right? Doesn't matter. But that's too much for the bodies to handle. Everyone's going to break down and there'll be no football left to be played at the end because surely I, I would be turning around and going, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Would you strike? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's consequences in place, so it would have to be done properly. You can't just turn up one weekend and go, I'm not playing this weekend. Don't fancy it going on strike. <laughs> it would have to be done properly. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's something they should be looking at. There'll be more injuries this year, I think, than ever in the division. Because there's more... The only saving grace, and people will not be happy with me saying this, but GB not going to the Olympics was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. But there will be a lot of injuries this year because the players, the bodies aren't used to it. And we talk about ACLs and we talk about why are players getting injured, etc. The game has come at such a rapid rate, right? So we're not used to it. It's because the body's not used to it yet. It's going to take its time. Sports science, 10 years ago, didn't exist. Yeah. Now look at it, it's, it's, um, it's making sure that we look after players as we go f as we go on the upward curve. Yeah, and one thing just to point out as well, that Rodri's season had finished mid-July and that was his first game back at the weekend. So he did have an extended Euros break, but he had been talking for a long time, maybe his body was overly worked and he hadn't quite been fully rested. Maybe it was an innocent jar of the knee but when it's a player who's as exceptional as that, speaking about fatigue, fixture congestion, his body has to be listened to, and then he does that, maybe more people will sit up and listen. Good truth, Juice Roo. You can buy that in your local shelf now.
You're watching the kickback. Time to preview some of the weekend fixtures oh. in the WSL with Rusha and Carla Ward. OK, Carla, Palace against Chelsea. How do we see that one going? Chelsea. I'm working that as well. Ooh. Chelsea. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. OK, Chelsea. Yes. Chelsea. Yep. OK, uh, City against Brighton. Interesting game. Oof. Will be an interesting game. I'm going City considering I said they'd go for the league. OK. I think there'll be goals in that game, but I'm also going to go with City. OK, Everton against Manchester United. Manchester United. Manchester United. OK, Leicester City against Arsenal. They've caused the upset in the past. Arsenal. Arsenal. God, you two get off with each other. Where's Sam against well. Liverpool? Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> God, respectable. <laughs> Villa against Spurs. I think this, for me, is probably the one of the weekend that's going to be really fascinating. I've got to go with Villa, but I think it is going to be very close. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Are you going to follow? I, I probably am. Well, you didn't even give a result. You didn't see who was winning. Who's winning? Villa. You're, oh, you're going with Villa? You are? Yeah. Right, OK. Why are oh, you going for a traitor? Well, I'm, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a close game. Like I said, I've touched on. I've seen how Spurs have played. They're looking decent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for a draw. Okay. Interesting. And what about London City Lionesses this weekend, Rue? Because they won again at the weekend, just going to the Championship. Briefly. We are away to Sunderland. Uh, so it's a tough place to go, Sunderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their pitch suits them. <laughs> it's, it's not a nice game of football. It's very scrappy, physical team. Um, but I'm hoping that we get enough quality to do enough and hopefully get three points. I and I will not be there. I will be off. A day yeah. off. Are useless. We don't travel to away games now, so it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. Whisper an angel, me and you, babes. On I'm, off, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on a cleanse. I'm on a cleanse. <laughs> I'm sure you are. We sure be with me. We'll go and watch Villa Tottenham. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I, I actually, I think I'm going to go to that. Might say that to you. I'd seen Kenza Daly at the weekend there, so I'm going to drop her a message, go and watch the game and catch up. Ooh, friends. friends. Um, by the way, Carla, who do you think wins the, the championship? Who goes up? Do you know what? It's, it'll be fascinating. I think. London City, you, you look, they've, they've invested enough that they should be winning the league. No pressure. Um, but look, if you have a look at the others, I think Birmingham will be up there. It's going to be so tight and I think it's a fascinating league. I, I actually think it'll come down to Birmingham or London City. Newcastle as well are one to be watching. I, I agree with you, but it's their Infantry. first league in. It takes, it takes a bit of time. Um, but I think they will do well and they'll survive. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be up there, thereabouts, but it takes a bit of time to... Southampton, Charlton, they'll all be up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a, again a really tough competitive mm -hmm. league yeah. to come out of. And you look at Charlton; they've been there or thereabouts. They'll be kicking themselves last season for not getting promoted. They were there near the top for right till the end of the season. Um, so they'll be they'll be looking to crack on and be pushed up. But we'll see. Okay, Carla, thank you so much for being with us. Before we let you go, we're doing some quick fire questions. Kicking back with Carla Ward. <laughs> Time to kick back with Carla Ward. Okay, firstly, <laughs> how do you kick back and relax? With my daughter. Mm -hmm. Quiet time. How old is she now? Five. Five. Going on 25. Oh my God, the sass levels at age five. The last few weeks I did say to her the other day, me and you need a conversation. She's got some sass. Yeah. Hilarious though. She could already be a manager. She could handle herself. Honestly, the media. you can, yeah. She's, she, yeah, she's a bossy little thing. <laughs> Funny, but yeah. If you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Probably a roast dinner or oh. burgers, because I'm... As you can tell, like a burger. I can't tell. I can't <laughs> tell. I've got, got a bang of t-shirt on. <laughs> uh, what song have you got on repeat at the moment? Anything Noah Khan. Like him a lot. Love Noah Khan. Love him. Yeah. Watched him live. So best, best person I've ever seen live, I think. Really? Good. Yes. Oh, he's so Unreal. good. You need to get on it. Get on him. Go to one of his um, concerts. Unreal. Is it not just like a bit edgy, isn't it? Like, no. no. <laughs> By the way, the place was bouncing. Was not one that? person sat down. Okay. Nice. Uh, early morning or late night? Early morning. Okay. Up and at them. Pre-match playlist or post-match celebration? Oof. A uh, glass of wine, post-match. <laughs> Best for an angel, mm. once again. Hot weather or cold weather for matches? Hot. Yes. No. It's cold weather watching hot. games. It's hell on earth. Be you Scottish or Irish or whatever you are. Oh, <laughs> no, I'd, I'd rather be in the <laughs> rain. <laughs> rain all day. Be that sweating, can't Sun. breathe. Ugh. 
said nobody ever. What's wrong with you? We obviously used to haven't played 90 minutes in a long time. This is You're very right, true. on the sideline. This is very true. Netflix binge or a good book? Netflix, <laughs> but... Um, Picture book? A book surrounded by idiots. Right. At the minute. Okay. It's a really interesting book. Oh, okay. God, I can tell where your head is at. Surrounded by idiots. You're, you're better than yourself in the world. Beach vacation or city break? Beach. Beach. All day long. Carla Ward, you have been a legend. Thank you so much for you're coming welcome. on with us today. Um, good luck for what's ahead for you this season. Lots Thank of you. punditry, lots of TV, lots of other initiatives. So stay in touch with us. We we'll hope to have you back on soon. We will. Thanks. And Thanks share lots me. of stories Thanks about you. Thanks for going nice and easy on me. I'm behaving. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get sacked for week two. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't work out for anyone. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back with you very soon on the kickback. <laughs>